Hello and welcome to the new learning unit. This week we change gears, moving away from the philosophical, theological, and speculative to normative definitions. The terrific discussions in the past couple of weeks, I think, have revealed some of the problems in rooting human rights in a particular or any religious tradition, including Robert Bella's civil religion. These beliefs may ground individuals and leaders in a deeper understanding of what it means to be a human being and the natural rights of people in the struggles for social justice. But as several of you have noted, some religious beliefs, in many instances, have also posed restrictions on the legitimate rights of specific groups of people. This unit may be the most difficult in terms of reading level, but the assigned book, Human Rights in the Constitutional Law of the United States by Michael J. Perry, provides a highly informative analysis of human rights, international conventions, and constitutional law in the United States at a rather crucial moment in our history. For this reason, the reading assignments are spread across a four-week period and are integrated with an activity related to the United Nations Conventions introduced in Chapter 2. A study guide for Perry is also provided. According to Perry, a key factor in determining whether or not a nation upholds international laws on human rights is whether or not the constitution of that nation upholds or challenges them. He provides a penetrating analysis of especially three main human rights and international human rights, which are, in quotes, entrenched in the constitutional law of the United States and are therefore part of the constitutional morality of the United States. One, the right not to be subjected to cruel and inhuman punishment. The right to moral equality. And three, the right to religious and moral freedom. The book is divided into two main or major parts. Part one, the morality of human rights, the internationalization of human rights, what is a human right versus what is a legal right, the normative grounds of human rights, international treaties, covenants, and conventions, and part two, the constitutional morality of the United States, capital punishment, the right to moral equality, the right to religious and moral freedom, same-sex marriage, and abortion. Alongside the readings in Perry for this week, you are also asked to take a panoramic view of human rights conventions, covenants, and protocols which emerged after World War II. These are available on the United Nations website, which is linked inside the weekly folder. The UN and UNICEF videos, by contrast to these legal documents, provide a contrast to the discursive text. They are up close and personal. They appeal to the emotions, using images of poverty, children, and women that tug at our hearts. The Excel assignment, by contrast, emphasizes critical thinking and analysis. You must complete a microscopic analysis of nation, state, member support for one of the conventions, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDA, and its optional protocol. The materials are at hand for you to itemize which countries have signed the optional protocol and which have not. As you complete the assignment, think about what agencies and laws in the United States fortify the CEDAW and its OP, why the OP is so important, and why some countries support it and some do not. The latter is in part a sociological question. By the end of the learning union, you should have a better idea of how to pose that question 
in ways that can be addressed with data. What research questions interest you? How might you use this information to write a letter to a political representative that expresses why a particular human right needs to be protected by constitutional law and or by international law?